Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll state the Nash Existence Theorem, give some examples of how to use it, and a flavor of its proof. We're marching forward in time. The idea of Nash equilibrium had been floating around in the economic world for a while by 1950, but it took Nash to characterize its profound importance and sufficient conditions for its existence. We've covered a number of games and methods now, so let's give a brief history of our class. We started by defining our subject matter. Then we defined our solution concept, Nash equilibrium. Given our stated goal of finding the Nash equilibrium of various games of interest, we used that definition to solve some games. However, using the definition was slow going, so we started to look for other methods to help us find Nash equilibrium faster. Our first method was iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. Iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies was faster than the definition, which was good, but some games aren't solvable by iterated elimination. So we came up with another method and used the intersection of individual best responses to find mutual best responses, i.e. Nash equilibrium. This method captured more Nash equilibria than iterated elimination, but there were still some games out there where even underlining did not seem to find a Nash equilibrium. Did those games even have Nash equilibria? It turned out that some of those games did have Nash equilibria, using what we called mixed strategies. We generalized Nash equilibrium to mixed strategies and found more Nash equilibria in more games. It might have seemed like we could just keep going, but as we saw in the last video, we couldn't. We finally made a game, a version of Bertrand Duopoly with no Nash equilibrium. We're at the end of some line. Now, as much as possible, we don't want to be in the business of guessing which games do and don't have Nash equilibria. We want to know whether there is a Nash equilibrium before we spend a bunch of time looking for one. Nash's theorem characterizes games in which at least one Nash equilibrium is sure to exist. Here is Nash's theorem from his 1950 doctoral dissertation. A static game with finitely many players and each player having finitely many pure strategies has at least one Nash equilibrium. This Nash equilibrium may be in mixed or pure strategies. Often we say at least one Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies, and that is not a contradiction since a pure strategy is technically also a mixed strategy which puts weight one on one element of the strategy space and weight zero on all others. Nash's theorem allows us to look at a game and determine that it does have a Nash equilibrium. All of the matrix games we've considered, which have finitely many players and finite pure strategy sets, have Nash equilibria. Nash's theorem does not apply to games with one or more infinite pure strategy sets. It tells us nothing at all about such games. The games listed below all have infinite pure strategy spaces so Nash's theorem tells us nothing about whether these games have Nash equilibria. We have already seen that in Cournot duopoly there is a Nash equilibrium. That isn't because Nash's theorem guarantees us Nash equilibrium, it just so happens that there is one. We've seen that Bertrand duopoly may or may not have a Nash equilibrium, depending on whether the firms have identical production costs. In the video after next, we'll see a public goods game, and it will have infinite pure strategy spaces and Nash equilibrium. Now let's give an idea of the proof. One of the main things that makes the proof technically challenging is that what we have been calling best response functions are not really functions. They are actually correspondences. We will develop our intuition using continuous functions and be satisfied with that. Fixed points are useful in a variety of settings and mathematicians have proven a lot of fixed point theorems over the years. Nash stitched the individual players' respective best response functions together into what we call the best response correspondence. A strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium of a game exactly when it is a fixed point of the best response correspondence. The properties Nash's theorem required of a game, that it have finitely many players, and that each player have a finite pure strategy set, were enough to allow him to apply Kakutani's fixed point theorem to a game's best response correspondence. Kakutani's theorem guaranteed the correspondence would have at least one fixed point, ergo the game must have at least one Nash equilibrium. 
We'll try to give some intuition for why a two-player static game of complete information in which each player has two pure strategies must have a Nash equilibrium. Here's a graph of the one by one square. As we saw in matching pennies, we can graph the mixed strategy best response functions inside this square. Nash showed that player one's best response function is continuous and connects the two thick black lines on the top and bottom of the square. Player one needs to pick P to best respond to Q equals zero. All such P get graphed on the bottom black line. Player one also needs to pick P to best respond to Q1. All of these P get graphed on the top black line. Continuity approximately follows from the idea that small changes in Q result in small changes in player one's best response. Similarly, player two's best response function is continuous and connects the two thick black lines on the left and right of the square. Player two needs to pick Q to best respond to P equals zero. All such Q get graphed on the left black line. Player two needs to pick Q to best respond to P equals one and all of these Q get graphed on the right black line. Continuity approximately follows from the idea that small changes in P result in small changes in player two's best response. Now let's draw our two continuous functions. The first must connect the top and bottom of the box, and the second must connect the left and right of the box. Let's see if we can draw some such functions that do not intersect. Here are some fairly sedate functions. The red function connects the top and bottom of the box. The blue function connects the left and right of the box. We can see that they intersect. Here are some squiggly functions that have lots of intersections. We need to try to push our functions to edges and corners if we wish to avoid intersections. We did our best. We pushed the blue function to the top of the box and the red function to the right. Still, they intersect at 1, 1. An important observation. Among games that have at least one Nash equilibrium, most have an odd number of Nash equilibria. The functions we drew all intersect an odd number of times. I counted 127 intersections of the very squiggly functions, which were randomly generated. I encourage you to try this graphing exercise a few times on your own. You will find that the only non-intersecting functions you can draw in this box do not connect the edges of the boxes appropriately. I also encourage you to count the number of intersections. Try to draw two functions appropriately connecting edges of the box with an even number of intersections to see why this outcome is a little unusual. Thanks so much for watching this video about the Nash Existence Theorem. In the next two videos, we'll study two different games of many players, which allow us to model strategic behavior in large populations.